real life examples, people who do have breasts that look like yeah. female breasts, but they do have a penis, would you say that that is a man? Again, you're taking a hypothetical person. I would need an actual individual, someone who does not fall under the category of either, my, either male or female. That sort of human being has never existed on the planet and never will exist and can't exist. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. Today, we're going to be watching Matt Walsh take a leftist student to school on the topic of intersex. And this one is an important one because it dismantles one of the main arguments that the gender ideologues will not let up on. So we're going to watch Matt Walsh make a few great points. And I'm also going to share with you a few return aces that you can execute when you hear this nonsense. Let's get into the clips. Preface my question by stating that there's currently 5.6 million intersex Americans, which are people who are biologically not considered female or male because they have incorrect chromosomes during their like process of being born. So my question is, why do you personally not support gender affirming care when a majority of those who are seeking gender affirming care are intersex individuals, considering that there are double the amount of intersex people that are Americans and adults than there are trans people. And why are you fueling the rights ideology of this like trans panic when considering that this healthcare that isn't even really for trans people, they just happen to use it is more for other issues. And by doing so, you're limiting people who are suffering to get those actual treatments that they need. Okay, so let's let's just go through a couple points here. Uh, first of all, you're saying that the so-called gender affirming care is not for trans people. So what, what, just for the sake of argument, what if I said, okay, I agree with everything you said, gender affirming care should be available for uh, intersex people, but not trans. Can we agree on that then? Uh, yeah, I would agree, but the laws that you're supporting don't. That's well, why that's, I'm that's asking actually, the that's question. That's actually not accurate. Have you looked at the, at the legislation? Yeah, what, I'm current. Oh, can I respond to you really quick? Well, let me finish asking my question. What specific law would prevent someone with a genetic anomaly or a deformity from seeking uh, some kind of uh, medical care or plastic surgery? So currently, one of the ways to fix intersex, like, issues that you find down the line, which is currently typically like infertility for men, erectile dysfunction. When you figure it out when you're around a teenager, you have to start doing hormone therapy and hormone blockers. Okay, so in case you guys missed it, that was a very key moment. This young lady said that some of the symptoms of intersex for young men come in the form of male infertility, I'm sure she meant infertility, as well as erectile dysfunction. And sometimes they don't notice until they are teenagers. So this would suggest that they had absolutely no idea that they were intersex and that they were just living life normally as a boy with a penis. And what this speaks to is the larger point that the goalposts for what it means to be intersex are constantly being moved to serve the purpose of the ideology. They want to try and blur the gender and sex lines as much as possible. So they take birth defects and other defects that affect sex specific organs as well as hormones and they'll call them intersex. The number of truly intersex people, which means it's actually really really difficult to tell what their sex is, is about a hundred times lower than they say. And Matt Walsh goes further into those points here. Both of which are banned under multiple, including the one that I'm specifically referencing, um, and it's the Kentucky proposed state law, would make sure that intersex individuals would not have access to those as it's considered under the umbrella of gender affirming care, because technically it is affirming their gender as they don't have a strictly male or female like genitals or a reproductive system. Okay. Um, I'm, I have to confess, I'm skeptical of your reading of the Kentucky law. I have not read the exact language of that law myself, so I can't say for sure that you're wrong about that. Uh, what I do know is that, what I can speak to is the, is the Tennessee law, for example, for where I'm from, um, which bans uh, these procedures, castration, mutilation, um, specifically mentions that if someone has an actual valid uh, medical issue, then obviously they don't apply. It's the same. It's the same thing as, you know, we would ban, we should ban cosmetic double mastectomies for gender confused women. Obviously, if you have breast cancer, you need a double mastectomy, then you would not be forbidden from, from getting that. It's very easy to write that language into the law. Um, now, that's the first thing. Going to your point about intersex, a, a couple of points here, a couple of things you said that, that I think aren't true. The, the first is you said, how many intersex people? There's currently, the United States clarifies in their census that there is six sorry, 5.6 million Americans, which is double the amount of trans okay. adults in the United States. 5.6 million. Uh, do, do you know how 
for that figure, to arrive at that figure, do you know how intersex is defined? Guys, quick public service announcement. I've just made a Telegram group. It's a group where we're discussing the news and ideas and current events every single day. We've already got a little bit of a gang going and it's going well. So if you guys wanna join that group, that's gonna be at the top of the comments and also linked in the bio. And obviously, if you guys don't mind, chucking a thumbs up on the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Back to the clips. Yes, intersex is defined as either having a chromosomal, here I actually have the exact definition pulled up on my phone from the US Census, uh, cause I wanted to make sure. Uh, so the, it includes people with an extra or missing sex linked chromosome, those born with other physical variations that don't fit into the categories of male or female. This is seen as someone who has breast, but also has a penis. Yeah. The, the issue is that the caveat there about other physical variations. So one thing that you should be aware of is that the actual number of intersex people has been over the years drastically inflated. And one thing that they've done is uh, they've included, for example, uh, a male who has uh, you know, an abnormally small penis size, for example, uh, can be included as, as intersex under, under current definitions of the term. Uh, so what they're doing is they're taking people to, to sort of inflate the number of intersex people, they're taking people who, who their, their biological sex is very clear, um, but there might be some there might be some variances in their body, and then they're saying, well, that's intersex too. And I think the reason that they're doing that is well, it kind of goes right to this conversation now um, that the existence of intersex people is judged as very convenient for 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 trans people in the LGBT movement. It's why they've included intersex in the pride flag, even though by your own accounting. Intersex has nothing to do with gay pride, trans, got nothing to do with it. It is a genetic anomaly, it is a physical deformity, it's a defect, it's a, it's a disease, whatever word you want to use. That's what it is, it's got nothing to do with any of that. Um, so there is a concerted effort to inflate those numbers because they find them useful. Um, last point, it's not that intersex people are not their own sex, okay? You said that they wouldn't count as male or female. That's not correct. There are only males and females in the human species. There is no third sex. No biologist worth his salt would recognize any third human sex. It can't be defined, it can't be named. An intersex person, an intersex individual, is a man or a woman whose, whose biological sex, for this small minority of people, is harder to determine because of genetic anomalies that may affect, for example, uh, their sex organs. But, but, but they are, but they're still male or female. So all of this information here is really key to understanding this issue. What the gender ideologues want, and I don't mean this girl because she seems like a lovely, clever, young girl, very misguided, but hopefully when she finishes college, she'll form some new and more productive neural pathways. What they want is for you to question whether your sense of objective reality when it comes to sex is actually true. They want you to think maybe you've been wrong about it the whole time and maybe it is a spectrum. Maybe it is just a social construct after all. Hold on, what is a woman? But it's important to not fall prey to this because it's obviously a distraction. It's a distraction from the bigger and more important issues and it's something that we should be able to easily dismantle and leave in our rear view mirror. Whilst we're here quibbling about what is and isn't intersex, what that means about the nature of gender and sex and objective truth and reality, there are perfectly healthy, normal children with absolutely zero abnormalities being socially and medically transitioned in the name of an ideology and simply because of a feeling. There are only two sexes and they are separated by gametes, sperm and eggs. But once again, this is a non-issue when it comes to the social contagion of transgenderism. The medical phenomenon of intersex is completely and utterly irrelevant. And normally when people bring this up, you can call them out on a logical fallacy because most of the time it's a red herring, a misleading argument presented to distract from the main issue. And last one here guys, a very strong argument that you can make here is that exceptions don't make the rules. There's a condition called polydactyly where children are born with one or more extra fingers. Does this mean that we have to now redefine how many fingers human beings have? No, obviously not. And now on to the last part. Okay, there are only male or female gametes, ova or sperm. That's all, that's all that there are. There, there are no other options. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, can I ask a follow-up question really quick then? Sure. Someone so, said no, but I'm gonna say yes. Okay. <laughs> so in, you said that the, it, it's either male or female. It's just harder in determining what it is. But in this time frame, 
would you say that there is technically a fluid system of what could be considered male and what could be considered female, such as with real yes. life examples, people who do have breasts that look like yes. female breasts, but they do have a penis, would you say that that is a man? There's a very good system for determining uh, if there's a male or female, and it's right almost almost every time. I mean, it's right 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, it, it's only for a small minority of genetic anomalies that there's any kind of issue at all. Now, you just gave the example of someone with breasts and a penis. Well, well uh, again, you're taking a hypothetical person. I would need an actual individual, and depending on how they look, uh, the, the, that, that shows how deep we sort of have to go to figure out what their actual biological sex is. Um, but, you know, I will say that, that a, a male who develops breasts is obviously still a male. Um, the, the last point I'll make about this is that another way of looking at it, there's no third sex, right? And the way that we know that is because th there is no category of person who has the reproductive capacities of both male and female. So it's, it's, you either have the reproductive capacity of male, or, or you have it of female, or you're supposed to have the reproductive cap, cap capacities of a male, but you don't because of a disease, or female, but you don't because of a disease. You know, a third sex category, I suppose, would be someone who has both reproductive capacities. If you were to find somebody like that, well, now you have identified a true third sex individual, someone who does not fall under the category of either, my, either male or female. That sort of human being has never existed on the planet and never will exist and can't exist, because there are only males and females. All right, thank you. So an important discussion there and some very key takeaways when confronting this very divisive and prevalent issue of sex and gender ideology. And it's very important to be armed and dangerous with these counterpoints because the implications of the truth being allowed to be distorted by these fallacious arguments is not only socially disastrous, it's potentially civilization destroying. We must be united under the banner of objective truth. And it's something that I, and I know a lot of you guys as well, feel compelled to defend. And guys, don't forget to like that video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you wanna learn more about this idea, in particular intersex, I've gone a bit deeper in it with this video right here. If you wanna watch another video as well, you can click right here. Until next time, I'm Jake, this is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.